Hello everyone, it's Dylan from Yu-Gi-Oh! Everything and welcome to my three year late Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links mobile app review. Uh, really three and a half years Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links was released, so I guess this is a three and a half year late uh, review. But I guess, you know, better late than never is what they say. And after a long time of waiting, of people peer pressuring me into getting and downloading Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links, about a month ago, probably about actually like three weeks ago, I finally caved in I downloaded the mobile app and I have been uh, completely addicted to Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links, and so I'm going to be going over some things as a brand new player and still very new to the Duel Links community and the Duel Links fandom, if you will. I'm going to be going over some of my initial thoughts on the app, uh, some things that I really do like, some things that I don't like, and whether I would recommend it to people who uh, enjoy dueling or people that maybe don't enjoy dueling but are big fans of the anime like myself and like I feel a lot of the viewers of my channel are. So, Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links, for those of you that are unaware, even though I have a feeling that almost all of you know what this game is, is a mobile app that you can play on your phone if you have a smartphone, or it's an app that you can play on your PC. I actually probably prefer playing it on PC. It's just much more convenient to play. It's just much more convenient to play on mobile, so I probably have spent more time playing on mobile. Uh, but when you join the Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links world, you get a little bit of backstory. Seto Kaiba is immediately talking to you about how you know, he was the one that created this augmented reality, this virtual reality, where duelists from all over the world can come and duel, and it's really cool. Probably my favorite aspect about Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links is the fact that the anime characters are all pretty important and at times you feel like they actually have value rather than just being placeholders as in okay I'm maining Pegasus but what does that really mean and the reason that they have some extra value to them that goes beyond just you know being cool placeholders that are callbacks to the show is each character has a unique skill uh, there's a bunch of different skills that different characters can master uh, for instance I use Maximilian Pegasus and the skill that I use is called mind scan and so after the third turn in a duel I can see all of my opponents face down cards so if my opponent has three cards set on their back row and a monster in face down defense position after the second turn, I know exactly what they have. And so this gives you a good insight into try and countering their moves and what they're going to be doing. And in that moment, it kind of does feel like you are being Pegasus. Because even though you can't see the cards that your opponent has, it's the next best thing. And so because of that, there really is that immersion with the anime characters. And that's probably the one thing that I've really enjoyed and it's not like you start with all of these characters you have to unlock a bunch of different characters you really only start with one character and you have a plethora of characters to unlock and not only are you trying to unlock a character from Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Monsters, but as you stage up by completing missions, you then get access to Yu-Gi-Oh! GX World, Yu-Gi-Oh! Dark Side of Dimensions World, and Yu-Gi-Oh! 5D's World. So if you're ever getting bored or you kind of get stuck with the objectives in a certain stage in the Duel Monsters world, you can just very quickly switch over to GX World or 5D's World, and you can start banging out those objectives and trying to level up in those worlds while unlocking different characters from the respective shows and that's probably the aspect that I've enjoyed the most as someone who is not big into actually dueling competitively I enjoy dueling but in a more casual sense of it uh, I really do enjoy the mission objective aspect of it and I think that's probably the most inviting part for someone who is brand new to Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links. The objectives are not too difficult, they get more and more difficult as you go on, and of course each character unlock mission varies in difficulty, so it might be more difficult to unlock Zane Truesdale than it is Chaz, for instance, uh, which I think that is actually pretty accurate. So there are some grinding tactics that you're going to need to do, you're going to need to create your deck in very certain ways to unlock certain characters, uh, but that probably is one of my favorite components of Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links. It feels like unlocking every character is unique and has correspondence to what they did in the anime. For instance, Yami Marek's unlock missions, one of his unlock missions is to summon Slifer the Sky Dragon in a duel against Yami Marek. 
Another unlock mission is to use a level 10 or higher card in a duel against Yami Marek while using my Valentine, and that of course is referencing when Mai actually was able to summon, or attempted to summon, the Winged Dragon of Ra against Marek. So, there's little, like, tidbits and throwbacks to what these characters went through in their animated series in their unlock missions, and that's something that I really do enjoy. And again, it gives it that uniqueness and that fresh flavor that really makes the app a lot of fun to invest time in. The PvP aspect of it is also pretty cool. Uh, I will say this, the one thing that I have already noticed that I'm not a huge fan of is if you want to get good quickly, you're gonna have to spend money. Uh, you can grind out some pretty good free-to-play decks. Luna Lights is actually the deck that I'm currently maining, and I really have fallen in love with Luna Lights. It's one of the better free-to-play decks out there right now. But the problem with PvP is if you want to really be able to compete with the Shirani decks and the Super Heavy Samurais and the Dark Magicians and the Blue Eyes and the Black Wings, and you want to construct a deck like them, you're more than likely going to have to spend real money. Now, if you don't mind spending real money, that's completely fine, but if you're looking to, you know, not dig too deep into the pocketbooks, Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links might be kind of a tricky experience, but the way that I've handled that is I've kind of turned it into almost like an objective. Like, I'm trying to see how good of a deck I can actually build, how good of a player I can actually be in this app without spending real money. You can open packs, and of course you have to get pretty lucky with pack lucks like I did with Luna Lights, so that you don't burn through all of the gems, and gems are things you just collect as you continue to play the game, so that you can can buy packs and buy different cards. There's a card trader that you can trade with. He might have a card that will fit your archetype very well. And there's also structure decks, and structure decks are a little, a little misleading because you can buy one structure deck with gems, but if you want to buy multiple structure decks of the same structure deck, of course, you have to spend real money. There's no way to buy two of the same structure decks, at least from my understanding, without spending real money. And of course, you're not going to be able to put together like a really good Red Eyes deck without getting multiple Red Eyes slash dragons, and the only way to do that is to buy multiple structure decks. And so structure decks are a little tricky where they kind of try and force you to spend money on it, which is understandable. Again, most apps are gonna do that. And I'm also not saying I would never spend money on it. If I get a $20 iTunes gift card for Christmas or my birthday, it's either going to Duel Links or Pokemon Go. I'm still big into Pokemon Go as well. So I'm not saying I'm opposed to it, but I definitely understand the criticism of why people say that it's pay to play. I don't necessarily fully agree with that. I think you can make very competitive and very strong free to play decks, but it's gonna be a lot of grinding. And so when you jump into it, my suggestion to you would be don't immediately go into PvP, and if you do, do not expect to be able to consistently compete and get really good results with a lot of top tier decks. It's just not going to happen unless you want to really empty the pocketbooks uh, right away, and that's kind of the vibe I've gotten from the game one month in. But besides that, which is something I kind of already knew about Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links, I gotta say I really like it. I've really enjoyed the app. I've been doing some streams, so definitely stay tuned to the channel if you uh, want to see me play Duel Links and, you know, misplays for days is basically the uh, the theme of those streams, but for people like me that have not played Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links in either a very long time or have never picked up Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links, I know the game is a little bit intimidating because when you jump in, there's a lot going on. Uh, I get that. I'm someone who does suffer from a little bit of a sensory overload. I can experience that very easily, so I completely understand that, but I gotta tell you, with Yu-Gi-Oh! Zexal World most likely coming out later this year, or maybe in the early stages of 2021. I've heard a few different things. There's no confirmation there. There are still going to be a lot of new things added to this app that you can experience as well as everyone else that's been playing Duel Links at the same time. And so I understand being overwhelmed by the amount of content that is in this mobile game, but it is a lot of fun, and it's not going to do you any harm to pick up and give it a try. And if you give it a try and the, the whole game doesn't really feel fun to you, or maybe you get burnt out after a little bit, there's obviously no harm in putting it back down. But you can have a lot of fun, and you can build... I think that's a misconception with Duel Links, because I've been having a lot of fun, and I've been having a little bit of PvP success with Luna Lights, which is a completely free-to-play deck. So you can have a lot of fun without spending money. That's kind of like a, you know, a side goal for me to see how good I can be. Uh, but just 
spending money is obviously going to be the quickest and most efficient way to build as strong of a deck uh, and decks that are going to be able to consistently compete with the top tier. Uh, but you don't need to spend money. It, it can be a free experience. And even if it is a free experience for you, it can still be a very fun experience. So Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links gets a big thumbs up from me. Uh, I have really enjoyed it. I'm way more into it than I've ever been any sort of Yu-Gi-Oh! game, whether it be Millennium Duelist or Legacy of the Duelist. I enjoyed those games, but Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links is just a little different. It obviously is speed dueling, and maybe that's why it's a little easier for someone like me to grasp, obviously someone who considers themselves to be a, an amateur when it comes to the way of dueling. So maybe that's another big appeal to me because speed dueling and the combos are definitely not as intricate as a master dueling combo strategy would be because there's less zones, there's less of a starting hand, and ultimately it's just more compact and easier for someone like me to grasp. So if dueling also intimidates you, it could be a good experience because it's a little easier in my opinion than a master duel is. But guys, those are all my thoughts on Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links. I, I hope you enjoyed my three year late review on the app. Of course, waiting this long, I'm able to review it with Yu-Gi-Oh! 5D's world being there, with GX world when the game first started, obviously it was just the original world and to see how much the game has expanded and how successful the game still is to this day is really incredible and really quite awesome if I'm going to be honest. So I'm excited for Zexa World. I'm excited to see characters added in and I'm excited to keep uh, trying to become a better duelist in this mobile app and continue to branch out and experience this game with all of you and a lot of great people who do enjoy the Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links game. Thank you all so much for watching. A special thank you to my platinum tier patrons, Jorge Carrillo, Horace May, Goosey Q, Smith620, Blue Maiden28, Panther J, Vincent Vanderveen, Nero, Jarrett Bueller, and Aura Dragon, and to my diamond tier patrons, Jesse Wood, Latrell Smith, Pegasus Saya, and Brandon Gomez, and to my Egyptian god tier patron, Stella Sky. Thank you to everyone who supports me over on Patreon, and thank you to everyone who is a YouTube channel member. You guys help me out tremendously. I cannot even begin to thank you for your support, and thank you to everyone who is a viewer of this. And thank you to everyone who just watches these videos, because without you guys, there is no way I would be able to do this. I will talk to you all down below. Let me know your thoughts about Duel Links, and if you're someone who dropped the game after playing for a very long time, please let me know why, because I am still very new to the game, and so there might be some elements that have burned out people after playing for a year or two that might affect me down the road as well. You have to remember that I've only been playing for three weeks, but those are my thoughts, and I'm really excited to hear from all of you and all your experiences with Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links. Thank you all so much for watching. I will talk to you down below, and I hope you have an amazing day.